Greetings, people of the world! Matthew back with you here at Novora Autism for the continuation of Let's Play Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn. It is day 83 and the sixth day for EDSS as a Dragoon here in the Realm Reborn, and yesterday we continued to help out the various Beast Tribe factions that are basically rebelling against themselves, and yesterday that came in the form of the Emulsia, and we helped out their faction known as the Brotherhood of Ash, which featured among its members this game's version of Tarzan. Or in this case, this game's version of what you could call Tarzana. Yeah, we had a female Mikote that was fighting alongside the Brotherhood of Ash, which essentially behaves in such a way that she was essentially abandoned as a child and raised by the Emulja's Brotherhood of Ash to be just like them. And so, now that we've taken care of that, it is now time to go after the fourth and final set of challenges that will allow us to take on Beast Tribe Quest if you ever want to do so. So, that brings us back to where this Let's Play started, Gridania. And we're standing in front of the Grand Company of Gridania, the home of the Order of the Twin Adder. So, let's go inside and speak with Serpent Commander Vorsai Hulwa to get the final challenge for the Beast Tribes from him. He has a level 42 challenge entitled Seeking Solace. Commander Forsai Hulwa seeks a capable adventurer for a most daunting assignment. Ah, now here is the man who inspires confidence. It heartens me to see you stride into the Outer's Nest today, for I have a task of considerable breadth and even greater import. A task that calls out for a competent adventurer. Allow me to elaborate. In recent weeks, my eye has been drawn to unusual movements among the Sylphs those charming yet troublesome beastmen with whom we share our forest home. In hopes of shedding light on their intentions, may be, may they, be they malicious or benign, I dispatched a young researcher to Little Solace to investigate further. The fellow goes by the name of Voice. May happy you have heard of him? Well, only through my first avatar, but in this case of my second, that would be a no. It would seem he is rather accomplished in his field. He set out a fortnight ago and has been sending regular reports ever since. That is, until some three days passed, though he is quick to assure me that his prodigious intellect and survival skills would ensure his safety, I cannot help but fear he has come to harm. Such is my request to you. Travel to Little Solace and inquire as to the well-being of our man. Seek out the sylph or Mixio, who has oft acted as an intermediary between our peoples. Now go in safety and in haste. The forest holds many dangers, these days more than ever. And so, that is where we go next. So, off to the East Shrug, because that's where Little Solace is, and away we go. Yeah, I, I always feel like it's proper to, when you're going to the Grand Companies, be it your own or another one, to dress in the uniform of the Grand Company that you've chosen. I, I, I just feel like that's like the proper respect when you're speaking with their representatives. Plus, it also gives me a sense of pride to proudly show off the uniform of the Grand Company that I've chosen. That, that helps, too. And so, we have arrived back here at the East Shroud. So, let's summon my Chocobo and be on our way. So, if we go from the Hawthorne Hut and off to the East, here in the Nine Ivies. Past the giant gnats, they won't bother threatening us because we're nearly 30 levels stronger than they are. <laughs> yeah, it's always good when a feral enemy senses that you are going to one-shot it without even trying. So, yeah, it's a good thing that they wise up and just back off because, yeah, that would be rather annoying if enemies just constantly follow you forever if they were feral, but you were strong enough to be able to kick their tail from pillar to post. So, the self we want to speak to, I believe, is going to be right up this little fancy staircase surrounding this tree. Yes, here's old Mixio. Hi, right, young man, what do you have for us? Walking one walks with strength and fun purpose, yes, but this one is a busy one. State one's case and state it quickly. Scholar? Walking one is looking for smart one, yes. This one knows no smart one. This one does no bumbling stumbling one, but what business would have anyone have with that one? Stumbling one's whereabouts? Why, right over... Hmm, wherever did that one bubble off to? Bumbling one likely stumbled off to see Elder One. Stumbling one is always bothering Elder One with silly questions. Bother someone blathering makes less sense than babbling brook, this one thinks. <laughs> 
Yeah, that means we now have to speak with Elder Frixio, and it's been a while since we've spoken with the Elder. Yeah, it's been quite some time since we've had to speak with Elder Frixio about anything. So let's go ahead and give the Elder a talking to. In fact, they're already speaking with this Mikote over here, Critorius Critorius Labius. <laughs> yeah, careful how you spell that, young man. Oh, brave one returns to these ones. This one is honored. Word of brave one's deeds comes often to little solace. These ones are honored to call brave one friend. Hmm? Brave one is searching for scholarly one. Brave one cannot possibly mean that one. This one has met many walking ones, and that one has all the wits of wing rat. Three days ago, witness one stumbled off to the Sylphlands babbling something about research. This one knows little of research, but this one does know that the Sylphlands are no place for walking ones, and witness walking ones that much the less. Yes, this one's ancient home is now the domain of touched ones, and those ones mean danger for these ones and walking ones alike. This one tried to stop Witness One, but Witness One's ears are stuffed with beeswax. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess we know what we're dealing with, don't we? A man who's determined yet also ignorant. And that cannot be good. It sounds like a recipe for disaster. Especially here in the Black Shroud. Omexio? Bubbling One set up for the Selfies! Bumbling one is even dumber than this one thought! Touched ones will greet bumbling one with broom and sizzle! Then dumpling one will be crusty one! <laughs> this one thinks it for the best! These ones will have one less worry! Wow! I, I can see, yeah. Uh, they may seem sweet and innocent enough, but they have no problem watching someone die, apparently. For all I know, you're a touched one in the- You're a touched one in the skies! Walking one would go in search of that one? This one is confused. Take this one's word. That one is not worth the trouble. Walking one is certain? <sighs> then this one will not stand in walking one's way. But heed this one's warning. Be wary or dead one's rule number two. Whatever that means. Anyway, now we have to speak with Omixio to take on the next challenge. Level 42, entitled Voice of Concern. Omixio is per perplexed by your concern for the hapless scholar. Hey, I'm in the business of saving lives, not just watching them die. Unlike you, Omixio, a touched one who's actually... Yeah, who's someone who's actually a touched one in disguise. Yeah. Walking one will truly go in search of bumbling one? This one thought Walking One was making joke, like the time this one stole Bubbling One's undergarments! <laughs> really, Omixio? This one does not understand what Walking One is thinking! This one would leave Bubbling One to bumble on one's own, but all well to each one one's own! This one saw Bumbling One stumble off toward Lark's call, between this place and touched one's home, Bumbling One is probably there shivering in stockings. If Bumbling One found stockings anyway, which this one doubts. Be warned, Walking One, the trees have eyes and report to touched ones. Walking One should not rush too quickly to Bumbling One's aid, lest Walking One fall into nasty trap. Well, your concern is duly noted, young lady. Or young sir, or whatever. Yeah, it, that was a male self because his last name ends with O. The female's last first name end with A. Yeah, and why am I saying last names? <laughs> yeah, these selves only have one name. So where we want to go into Lark's Call specifically is going to be right over here. It's actually not all that far. So let's go and see if we can't help out the... Young man is in distress, much to the chagrin of the sylphs. Yeah, we want to help someone, but um, the sylphs don't want us to do it, apparently. But, of course, and this will come as not much of a surprise, we have to fight through feral enemies, given our experience level. And considering given theirs as well. 
So let's get rid of you so I don't have to deal with you anymore. Alright, you're dead. Yeah, this is where we want to stand. In fact, I want to get my Chocobo out into play again. Yeah, I'm going to have to make it a point to buy some more Geisel Greens before too long, because, yeah, I only have one left. Alright. Staying at the destination. And so now we wait on seeing if we can find voice at all. And so let's have a look. Uh-oh, I believe he's got his hands tied up. Walking one scribbles letters! Maybe walking one is smart one that everyone was talking about? Yeah, that must be the elder. Smart one? Ha! Smart one would not stumble so stupidly into these one's domain! Someone help me! They'll eat me alive! Sh stupid one! These ones have no need for eating! Or did stupid one not read that in stupid one's paper stacks? Stupid one is even stupider than this one thought! Now answer this one! Stupid one tries to sneak into these one's home and kidnap chosen one's partner, yes? Stupid one will confess, or stupid one will be shocky, sizzly one! Uh oh. The chosen one? Pumblings? What's all. And why are you smiling about this? You're in danger, man! Aha! Did this one know it, or did this one know it? But this one, uh, I was just repeating what you... Uh-oh. Oh, that's a lot of magic. That's really scary. Oh, uh, we better... I hope we come and do something. Silence! This one here, sneaking one! What one goes there? This one. This one knows, boss one! This one has seen Walking One in Little Silence! Walking One is strong, not like Stupid One! <laughs> bah! This one will deal with Stupid One another day! Let these ones be off! Really? No battle? Unlike the other three warrior classes? Or rather, the other three beast tribes, I should say? Well, we did find our man, and that's what we came here for. So, let's see if we can get any vital information from him. So, let's go up. And just as a... Well, you know what? I was able to succeed last time without changing a tire, so... Yeah, if we have to go into battle again, so be it. So, yeah, let's give voice a hand. Oh, friend, how can I ever repay you? Why, I thought I was a goner for sure. What has ever do you suppose got into those sylphs? The bestiaries describe them as such a carefree, fun-loving folk, and my rather limited first-hand experience has been the same. But do tell, to whom do I owe this debt of gratitude? An adventurer dispatched by the order of the Twin Adder on behalf of little me, you say? <laughs> Bless the commander who's looking out for his charge, are you kidding? Are you kidding? You're seriously going to come at me while I am in the middle of a conversation. Are you kidding me? You piece of molted ziz crap. There, now you're molted ziz crap, literally. Now then, shall we try this again? Take two. Mark it. And action. Oh friend, however can I repay you? Why, I thought I was a goner for sure. Whatever do you suppose got into those sylphs? The bestiaries describe them as such a carefree, fun-loving folk, and my rather limited first-hand experience has been the same. But to tell, to whom do I owe this debt of gratitude? An adventurer, dispatched by the order of the Twin Adder on behalf of little old me, you say? <laughs> Bless the commander, always looking out for his charge. One, I'd like nothing more than to continue this conversation. Would you mind terribly if we did so back at Little Solace? This place has given me the heebie-jeebies. Yeah, like, ten more seconds. Ten more seconds and it would have been okay. Oh. 
That little piece of crap. Yeah, this is worse than getting called on the phone while doing a recording. It's like, seriously? Yeah, because that happened yesterday. Because I was trying to make a really good joke, and I was about to sh read, say the punchline for it, when lo and behold the phone rang yesterday, and that really pissed me off. And so now, we come back to Little Sauce, yeah, and now it's happened here, with some stupid random enemy coming to, over and deciding that it wants to pick a fight. Oh, that makes me so mad! Alright, voice. Yeah, you somehow related to Royce from Lunar 1 because, yeah, given how that went down, that would not surprise me if that was true. Ugh, so annoying. Oh, hello. I say it is good to see you in one piece, friend. Oh, but where are my manners? I've not even properly introduced myself. Voice, Gridania's foremost scholar of silver customs and law at your service. Well, at least that's what I told the commander when I volunteered for this mission. Just between you and me, I'm actually rather new to the field. <laughs> People who lie to succeed. <laughs> and now that you've been exposed by pretty much every sylph in Little Solace and Lark's Cull, I really don't like how this is going to continue for you. But I've been long fascinated by the cute little critters, and I thought this the perfect opportunity to make a name for myself. Which reminds me, I was just thumbing through one of the tomes I uh, borrowed from Stillglade Fane when I came across a particularly fascinating passage of a legendary sylph who said to possess such power that she controls the very fate of her people. Now, I realize this might sound crazy, and but I couldn't help but wonder if this might be the self-same chosen one that that frightful sylph was... Chosen one? Yes, this one does know the legend. Ah, Alofrixio. Chosen One, the one who embodies the spirit of all trees that have ever lived, or ever will live, in these ones for us home. Once every ten hundred years does Chosen One sprout forth, to lead these ones into a new era before returning to slumber, birth and rebirth, such as the cycle of these ones' civilization. Ten hundred years, eh? So if the last recorded sighting of the Chosen One was, yes, that would mean the next rebirth would occur in, uh, uh, just give me a moment now. Uh, yes, carry the one and, <laughs> yeah, it seems like you're terrible at math again, math as well, too. Elder One, could it be that rebirth of Chosen One is nigh and touched ones are plotting something? Well, I'll be. I believe our soul friend here has the right of it. This one does not like this at all! Something must be done! That's <laughs> how so she goes to run for help. Or he runs to, for help. Something, yes, something indeed must be done. And yet many questions of importance remain to be unanswered. Such as, where might we find this chosen one? And what is the true nature of the power she holds? And most importantly of all, where pray tell did I misplace my underclothes? I know not if this is related to the coming of the chosen one, but the trolls would is terribly... <coughs> Chilly these days. But regardless, I swear now that I shall remain at Little Solace until these mysteries are unraveled. Twas not by dumb luck that I was chosen for this task. No, the esteemed ladies of my nation <coughs> knew that. No, they knew that. Oh, my, it is rather cold, isn't it? Uh, if you'll allow me a moment's respite. Yeah, I think so. Voice of concern? No kidding! So let's go back up this tree. And speak with our little friend, Old Mixio, again to complete the challenge. This one is worried. If Chosen One falls into the hands of Touched Ones, it could mean the end for these ones. This one must see to the safety of Little Solace. The search for Chosen One, this one would trust to Walking One. Coughing One spouts big words, but has not the strength to save these ones. This can be seen by anyone, and so this one turns to Walking One. Will Walking One help these ones? Well, in a rare instance of actually being in a situation where the people that we're speaking to are, we know from the beginning that they are legitimately benevolent, you can count on this one. Thank you, Walking One! Walking One is true friend to these ones! This one will not forget Freely One's kindness! And so, that task is now completed. Which means you now get an opportunity to take on all four versions of the Beast Tribe quests. 
through the Sylphs, through the Amalja, through the Kobolds, and through the Sahagen. And the way that the, um, these particular tasks work uh, is that you speak to the representative of the particular beast tribe that you're going to, and you get an opportunity to take on any challenges that they may offer you. Now, here's the thing. You may see it in the box that it says remaining allowances, six. So, taking on the Beast Tribe challenges, the Beast Tribe quests, there is a cap on how many you can do in a particular day. You are allowed to do a number of maximum of six in total per day. But here's the thing, you can do no more than three with a single Beast Tribe, which means if I'm here at Little Solace and I take three um, allowances, three Beast Tribe quests today, that is the maximum I can take with the Silks. I would then have to go to another Beast Tribe to take on the rem or any combination of the remaining Beast Tribes to take three more to reach the maximum allowance of six in a particular day. So yeah, that, that kind of sucks that they cap you like that, but... And so every time you take on a task like this, you would get experience skill. You'll also get something called the Allegan Tombstone of Mythology. And this is something that is used um, at the end of the game, in post-game, to get really, really enhanced armor and weapons. Plus, in addition to that, you also gain points in terms of self relations, because, as you may have noticed with all four of the Beast Tribes, you start out with neutral, but you have to build up your relations, and every quest that you complete with a particular Beast Tribe gets you five extra points. You also get one of these, known as a Venture. An adventure is something that allows you to hire a retainer, which I've already done, but I have not shown on camera. However, since we have time, I'm going to show off my retainer that I've hired. So let's go back to New Gridania. And in going back to New Gridania, I'll show you what I'm referring to. So a retainer is someone that you hire at any markets and the, any of the three main cities, Gridania, Lemsa, Lemsa, or Olda. You go to something called a summoning bell, or, well, first you have to start with what's known as a retainer vocate. But we'll explain more on that once we actually get to the market in Gridania. So back to New Gridania, and the closest place to the market is the Leatherworkers Guild, so we'll go over there. And then once we go over there, then we can show off what you do with the retainer. So we'll just wait for the screen to load, for old Gridania to load in. Shouldn't take too long, but it has been a slow day of loading screens. So, over here to the market. So you come up to the Retainer Vocate, you speak with them and let them know that you're interested in hiring a Retainer. At, when you start out, you can only take on a maximum of two Retainers. Once you um, get yourself a, reta a Retainer, you can, be, you can customize the appearance of the Retainer in any way that you like. It's basically like creating your own avatar when you start the game. And so once you've done that, then you can give them a name, you can also give them a type of personality. And you have to pick a name that is original because you're, there's only one name that's allowed in every single location when you're able to get a retainer. So every retainer has to have a unique name, so it's not to be confused with someone else's retainer. So once you take care of all that, then you can do a couple of things. First of all, you can have them sell items that you have an abundance of, like if you have too many items and you need to get rid of them, one of the best ways you can do it is by selling them in the market by using your retainer. So let's go ahead and summon my retainer Karita. Yeah, I would have went with Karina, but someone else already has that claim. So this is my retainer Karita, I am Makote from the Keepers of the Moon Clan, and if we can just make sure that can, she can actually remain visible. So, you can entrust her or withdraw items from her, you can... So, I've given her a number of items that I can have sold here in the Gridania market, because we ha we hired her in here in Gridania. She would not be able to sell items in Limsa or in Olda. She can only sell them here, and they are sold through the market boards, which I'll show off in a moment. 
But here, we want to make it a point to go ahead and sell the items in my retainer's inventory on the market. So we'll go ahead and do that. You can set the price to whatever it is that you want. And you can also set the item to be sold right away, or you can choose to wait. Which is why the items are in my retainer's inventory and not my own. So, once you do that, then she can, he or she, can go out into the field and sell items in the market. And then, once you have that active, you can come over to a market board, and you can see what types of various weapons and armor are available for sale. And it can not, and it's not only limited to weapons and armor, you can also take on, on various medicines, items that are needed for crafting, and also if you have, if you're in a grand company, or no, not in a grand company, in a free company, you can purchase various items to build your house that your free company can call its own. So let's go ahead and, for example, say, let's go, say I wanted to get some materia. I would call it materia, go to search, and then see the list of what types of materia are available. They come in various forms, up to a maximum uh, a maximum level of four. And as you can see, they are responsible for enhancing your various status. Not only for your own stats, but also for various resistances to various um, of the uh, various elements like earth, wind, lightning, water, whatever. And also, you can also increase your accuracy, your critical hit rate, your determination, pretty much any stat that you want to enhance. You can even enhance stats of of the crafting materials and the gathering material and the gra and the gathering classes as well. So let's say I wanted to let's go up back up to the top of the list. And say that I want to go and get my hands on a Strength Materia number th 3. Let's go with the Strength Materia 3 as a demo. So, as you can see, these are the prices that various gamers have set through their retainers to sell their respective Materia for. And it also not only determines the price that they've chosen, but also the number of Materia, or any other items that they may have chosen, on the board, and basically tells you what you have to pay in order to obtain this item for yourself. As you can see, some people might end up going completely outrageous, and you probably wonder why the heck would anyone want to sell all a single piece of materia for a hundred million gil. I don't understand it, and some of these prices are rather outrageous, which is why it is not uncommon for people to be doing pretty much competing with the various prices to try and get their items sold. For me, since I've never really had the need for material over the course of this game, everything that I have available for sale right now, through my retainer, would be materia. So whenever the retainer sells the items that you are selling, you, you get it for... They get the money, but then they also get a little commission, so you don't always get 100% of the price that you set the item for. It's usually 5% of the item of the item's price. So, if, for example, say I put up a Strength Materia 3, and I put it up for like 5,000 gil. Then, what would happen is that I would, if it gets sold at 5,000 gil, then I would get 5,000 gil through the retainer less 5%. But any gil that is earned through the sale has to be withdrawn from the retainer before you can obtain it yourself. Like, for example, since I already have a whole bunch of materia already sold, and I've already obtained a bit of the materia, or not the materia, but the gill, that has been earned by the retainer, this means that, well, I've already taken away 8,000 gill from the retainer. If I wanted to go further, I could go ahead and say that I am withdrawing the... Let's say I want to draw an additional 2,000 gil from what she's obtained. I don't have to take everything, I'm not required to. But now I have the 2,000, two part of the 2,000 gil that she had as a result of the sale. So, yeah, that pretty much explains everything you need to know. But you can also do more things. You can also actually have your retainer go out into the field and actually fight. And in doing so, they can go out, gain experience levels, and they can also gain um, 
some rather unique and interesting items if you're in the need for such things. Um, but I don't think that option is available yet because it's not been made yet available to me. So, for now, we'll just leave things as they are. So, um, hope that wasn't all too confusing, but that's as best as I can describe it. So, as it stands right now, having completed all four of the Beast Tribe challenges, and having given a basic tutorial on how the retainer works, we're going to call it for today and we're going to continue on with some new side challenges tomorrow in order to build up our experience points because we are still going to very much need them. So at this point I'd like to thank everyone for watching the continuation of Let's Play Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn. And when I join you again, we will see what type of various side quests we can take on next in order to build up our experience points. So until next time everyone, this is Matthew at Novora of Autism, saying take care, and I'll see you soon.